All right, we are on to lesson four, which is all about parametric modeling. A uh, really powerful tool in Fusion 360 and in a lot of CAD softwares, which pretty much allows you to create sketches and sketch dimensions um, as a function of other parts of the sketch. And where that comes in handy is when you go back to, um, say revise a sketch or make a modification. Let's say you wanna scale a sketch up. All you have to do is go in and change a few um, of the key dimensions, the driven dimensions and everything else will scale with it as opposed to having to go in and change every single dimension um, about the sketch, which can be a lot more cumbersome. So that's, that's kind of in a nutshell what parametrics is and what parametric, um, what the parametric workflow is, um, but we'll, we'll, we'll get into the details of that soon enough. So this is uh, lesson 4-01 that we're starting with, um, where we're gonna sketch lines, rectangles, circles, and arcs. Alrighty. So if you haven't already done so, open up a new sketch. Um, it's untitled. All right. So the first thing they're showing us here is in your browser on the left hand side. Um, underneath document settings, there's a place to change the units. I believe standard is metric, so it'll open up using millimeters. But you can actually go in and once you uh, toggle over it, uh, this little uh, change active units icon shows up. You can click on it and change those here. Um, if you're anything but your default, so right now I'm an inch, which is not my default, I can click this checkbox, which would make it the, um, the standard of the default. I believe millimeters, yeah, is already set as the, as the default. But anyway, I think we want inches for uh, this lesson. We'll see in a sec. Okay. Yeah, so it says then choose the inch option. So we're good. Okay. Um, create sketch on the XZ plane. They're calling it the top plane, but as we mentioned in lesson two, um, we've made the XZ plane the front plane, or at least I have. And uh, so that's why I'm going to keep it as, but I will be starting my my sketch on the XZ plane. So new sketch, XZ, this should all be review at this point. Okay, we're gonna create a line. And we're gonna put the first point on the sketch origin. Origin is zero, zero. So where Z equals zero and X equals zero, it's the very center and it's denoted by this kind of target looking symbol. Um, also, when you hover over it, it your, your cursor kind of snaps to it. So we're gonna go like that. We're gonna follow what they've said where the first part of the line is zero, zero. Okay. And then they say, uh, notice as you uh, go through vertical or horizontal, it'll snap to that and it'll, um, it will also put the constraint icon for, uh, you can see it there for either vertical or, see so again, it'll snap or horizontal. They're gonna point out though that uh, if you hold down control on your keyboard, that'll override that snapping feature, um, which can be useful in, in some cases, but I would say um, more often than not, it's, it's more helpful to, to have that snapping feature. But, on a Mac, it's going to be command instead of control. And you can see you can go through both horizontal and vertical without uh, having it snap to zero or 90. Okay. Uh, before clicking a second time to define a line, use the length value box to enter a value of three inches. All right. Plus press the tag key to continue the angle value box, left click in an open area of the canvas to decline any angle values and then click the green check. All right. So they said to, you can see it's already um, 
the length button is already highlighted. I'm gonna put in 3.5 because I wanna show you something real quick. Actually, I'm not gonna put anything in at all. I'd rather uh, just put in some, well, okay. I'm gonna put in three. I'm gonna put in three, I guess, because it's not letting me come out of that tab. Left click, okay. Oh my gosh. Well, that's not what I wanted to do anyways. Okay, we're gonna call that good. Uh, what I wanted to show you is this. When you go to dimension something that's um, at anything but vertical or horizontal, if you drag the cursor out far into the left, then you can dimension just the height segment or in this case, the Z axis of this, of this segment, or if you drag it up rather, you can define just the horizontal um, uh, component of the segment. Uh, but what we wanna do and what they're having us do is define the magnitude of the segment, not just the Z, um, or, or sorry, not just the, the vertical or the horizontal segment, but the, mag the magnitude of it. So to do that, if you just hover really close and right above the line, then you'll see the dimension runs parallel, which is again, the magnitude, um, uh, which is what we want. So I'm gonna click that, three. Super useful though, if you do want to um, instead define the rise over run or the X, or yeah, the, the X and Z or the horizontal and vertical, um, independently of one another, that's, that, is, that can be useful. All right. A three inch long line is created and one of its endpoints is located at the origin. All right, use the mouse to drag the line and notice that the line's length does not change, but the angle does. All right. So if we come over here and exit out of the dimension tool, pretty much what they're showing you is that, um, We've defined two things about this segment. First, we have a constraint at the center. So that thing's not gonna move anywhere. We're gonna pivot around. And we've defined its magnitude, um, which is three inches. So that will remain constant. We can't drag it out further or you know, compress it at all. It's, it's rigid. Uh, with the exception that this endpoint here is free to, free to move. Okay. Now they want us to apply a horizontal constraint. Um, it's important to note here that you want to put the line closer to the horizontal than you do the vertical, because when you click on horizontal slash vertical as a constraint, it's gonna snap to whatever it's uh, uh, closest to, whether it be horizontal or vertical. So we wanna really make sure that we're closer to the horizontal so as to not confuse it and there it goes. Okay. Andiamo. Press L on the keyboard to open the line tool. Beginning at the end of the line, draw a vertical line. All right. And then in step nine, we're going to do two steps at once. Um, we're going to hold down the left mouse button, and in doing so, that'll allow us to create an arc. Keep, let's keep chugging along. Maybe we can do it all at once. All right, release the left mouse button and draw another line to close the shape. And then create a tangent constraint between this line, well, it would be, it would be this line and the arch. And I'm guessing they're gonna have us do a you know, vertical constraint on this to lock it in place. Okay, I'm gonna show you guys a quicker way. So this, this is like a four step process that they're having us do here. Uh, that's all well and good. You can run through those steps if you want. I'm gonna show you a quick shortcut um, to, to getting the same, uh, the, the same structure here, okay? So we're gonna create the first line that they've asked for. It's gonna be vertical. Great, all right, we're gonna click and drag. Okay, it's at this point that I'm gonna come all the way down here with my cursor to the bottom left of this box. And by doing so, I've snapped it to the origin and you can see that it's now locked 
on that vertical. And as I drag it up, it's actually gonna lock on the horizontal too. Ooh, didn't do it. Well, if I bring it over here, it'll lock on the horizontal. And boom. And then I'm gonna close it. So we've just done the same thing. We've created that automatically. Uh, the, the, the tangent constraint, meaning this line segment is tangent to this circle at this point. This one is as well. Um, and I don't know that there's a vertical constraint on this or not. There is now, but it, it was vertical um, just by nature of, of, of how we created this semicircle. Um, so that just saved us a few steps. Okay, where are we at? Okay, we're gonna create a two point rectangle um, to draw a rectangle inside the closed profile. One thing about when I'm making drawings is I like to make them neat so that when I open them back up in the future or let's say somebody else opens them up, um, it's easy to follow and it's easy to read. And so I don't like this uh, dimension, this three dimension here, three inch dimension. It's kind of overlapping another part of the drawing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight it and just drag it down. Okay, we're gonna press D for dimension tool and we're gonna have this left edge of our inside box, um, a quarter inch set inside from the left edge of the um, outside box. Okay, 0.25. All right, and what they're gonna have us do in the next steps, this is exactly the, the parametrics that I was talking about. Okay, that's when you're starting to define other dimensions as a function of um, dimensions that we've already made. So the right side, uh, it's gonna be equal to, so it's a pretty simple function in this case, uh, it's gonna be equal to the left side. Right side equal to the left side. So we, when we click out here, I'm actually just gonna come over here and click that. And it's as simple as that. So I, and I'll do that here on the bottom. So as we're defining it, I come over here, I click on the, the dimension that I made on the left side. You can see that it's stored as D9. Each dimension has a, an identification in your sketch or in your sketch is. Um, and so this was the ninth dimension. And, and, and what we're defining right now is the 11th. See, it says D11 and D11 is gonna be equal to D9. Okay, all right. I'm just making sure I'm not missing anything. Yeah, I mean, I pretty much covered everything that was said in here. If you were to change this dimension here, which I'm guessing they might have us do in, in a little bit, then you'll notice uh, that these dimensions are gonna reflect that change because they're equal to it. All right. Oh, and they want us to dimension the, the top here. Uh, that's the same. Okay. All right, so this is where they're gonna have us, they're gonna show, um, that when we update this one dimension right here from 0 0.25 to 0.125, we should see these other three dimensions snap. Yep, snap out uh, a little bit. So this is 0 0.125, 0 0.125, 0 0.125. And again, this is kind of messy. So we wanna, we wanna make sure we're keeping our drawings really clean and uh, relatively easy to read. Okay. Click create center diameter circle, draw a circle inside of the closed profile. Make sure the circle's center point is directly above the arc's center point. Um, there will be a blue dashed line that will indicate you're directly above it. So that's what I was referring to earlier, earlier when we were building this arc um, and, it, and it helped us skip a few steps. Um, it's that blue dashed line that kind of locks in place 
uh, that, that indicates that you're directly above or horizontal to um, the point of interest. So the point of interest in this point is, it's a lot of points, uh, is the center of our arch. So I'm gonna snap to that center first, then I'm gonna take it up. You see that blue dotted line? It means we're directly above it and we'll just create our circle like that. I'm right clicking and then you have all these options here. You can cancel it, you can delete it, uh, so on and so forth. We're gonna click okay. That just exits out of the circle function. Um, it's an alternative to hitting enter or escape on the function. All right. First, draw the circle without enter entering any dimensions. The circle is blue to indicate that it's not fully defined. That's something we haven't covered yet, um, which is really helpful. Oh, and we have other parts that aren't defined as well. So we're gonna have to um, fix that in a second. Um, so when part of a drawing isn't defined, it's uh, meaning it has degrees of freedom. It can be changed in some way uh then it is going to be highlighted in blue the, the the blue line here uh whereas if it's fully defined or it's locked or it's fully constrained um it's going to show up as a black line which means these black lines right here are are they can't they can't be moved or altered or changed unless i went in and either deleted a constraint or modified one of the dimensions um and so that's what we want to do with all of our sketches. We want to make sure that they're fully blacked out or fully constrained before we're finished with them. That way they can't accidentally be altered, uh, say later on in the design. Um, so that's what we're shooting for. First of all, let's, let's figure out why our arch um, is not fully defined and define that before we continue. Um, so I just did a little bit of searching around and, and, and realized that I missed to define the height of this. And in doing so, we have this unconstrained arch. So I'm going to go ahead and define that as, uh, you can see it immediately turns black as soon as I dimension the height. 1.75, great. I believe it was 1.75 in the tutorial. Let's make sure 1.75, yeah. So I don't know where I missed that, but at any rate, scroll back down to where we were. Okay, uh, 0.75 is what we want as the diameter. So I'm gonna move this back down, dimension. This, Um, I want to show you real quick, uh, you can define different parts of this circle. So by default, you can define its diameter, but I could actually go down and define its radius instead um, by clicking radius. Uh, we'll keep it on diameter uh, because that is what the best for 0.75, I think is what this is. All right. Point seven five. Click constraints. Add this constraint between both center circles. So, even though we used the center of this arch to locate uh, the center of the circle, it's not necessarily constrained. I can still move it around um, until I physically go go in with the vertical constraint on and automatically snap that for me. So that's good. Okay. One other thing now, it's still blue. I'll give you a second to guess why. We've put a vertical constraint on it and we've dimensioned its uh, diameter, but there's still one degree of freedom. And that is that it hasn't been defined in this axis here. So we need to do that. Next step uh, oop, is to apply a one inch dimension here. All right. 
Oh, what's going on here? It's not cooperating. Gosh. Exit, exit. There it goes. My computer was just glitching out. There we go. Create an arch. So we're going to create an arch in a different way as opposed to clicking and dragging. We're going to do a three point arch. Um, and there's several different ways to doing that. Well, I'm saying arch, arc, I guess is the, the correct term. Um, you can do a center point, tangent, or three point. They all function slightly differently. Um, recommend you give each one a shot and just get an idea of, of what it means. It pretty much is um, uh, defining it in a different way with three uh, different points and in different orders. Uh, but they're having us use, it looks like, the activate the center point arc option inside the control panel, which would be the second one here. Um, and in doing that, we're going to hit the center first, then the edge of one of the arc, uh, arcs or of the arc, and then the other edge. So you go center, edge, edge. And that defines it. If I go back, control Z, I got to exit out of that, control Z. If I instead click on the center and start from this edge, it'll allow me to do the same thing. Doesn't matter which edge. Okay. Cool. And we're gonna save this, that, that finishes this up. We're gonna save this as sketching practice and we're done with the first tutorial. So control S, sketching practice.